Hi folks, this is SimplexX and today I'm going to show you how to create a damage layer from scratch. Um, there's a couple of different ways to create a damage layer, um, but let me just tell you the different things that you might be using it for. So a lot of uh, designers will create damage skins. Uh, some of them are pretty cool, or sorry, the regular skin layers and some of them are pretty nice, but uh, they don't create damage skins for them. They don't create spectral maps and you're kind of left on your own. Uh, the other big thing that people will do is they'll include the original default damage skin or they'll include a damage skin with only the alpha layer removed which means basically there's a transparent layer in the damage skin it's pretty easy to copy and paste onto the major skin and then delete that section and uh, I'll show you how to do that too that's kind of a lazy person's or lazy designers way of getting a damaged skin in there I have to admit I do it myself I get so excited about working on the next skin I just sort of do it quickly uh, but once you do it right uh, and you take the damaged skin from the original skin you can actually apply it to that model of airplane as many times as you want in the, in the future okay so this is a uh, T50 uh, that's based off of the Black Eagles South Korean Air Force team um, and uh, this is a aircraft I designed it's on the F9F2 and the F9F5 Panther airplane so you can apply that it's on live.warthunder.com and uh, of course I have a bias I really like the plane but let's go ahead and jump right into GIMP so you can use this tutorial with uh, Product Studio or PaintNet, or sorry, not Product Studio, but um, you can use it with PaintNet or um, uh, Photoshop or whatever your choice is. The principles are the same, but you'll have to figure out how to do the exact specifics. Okay, so this already assumes you know how to get the files, how to download them, and what the basic files are that you're going to need. So you're going to need the primary skin file, the underscore A file, for whatever skin you're trying to uh, make a damage file for. You're going to need the original skin file, so go ahead and use the wand to create the original skin file, also the underscore A, and then you're going to need the underscore A.DMG file for that skin, and that has all the damage in it. So, so let me just start real quick with the cheap way. The cheap way is you go in, and you go to select, select by color, you come into the damage file, making sure that's highlighted, and you click anywhere where this checker pattern is. That's the transparency. All right. And once you have the transparency, you can come to your primary file, unhide everything else, and literally just press delete. And it'll delete those sections of the file. If we unselect, you'll see that you have these see-through areas now. And when this plane crashes, those areas will be transparent, you'll be able to see through the plane, it'll look like it's damaged. But what you won't have is any extraneous bullet holes or smoke damage or runoff. You can see the fuel slot, fuselage has almost no damage whatsoever, so when it's all beat up, you won't be able to see it. Again, this is kind of the cheap uh, method of doing it. All right, so I'm gonna undo that change. We're gonna definitely do that back later, uh, but for now, let's go ahead and keep this file off to the side. One of the things I'm going to recommend, I'm going to do select none so that goes away. One of the things I'm going to recommend is that you don't use your original files because you may need them again later. Uh, you can always copy them back in, but this just makes it easy. I'm going to create a copy of the original panther uh, skin and the damaged panther skin from my original file folder here. Duplicate that layer and we'll take those copies and we'll move them up here. And then for now, I'm going to turn off my originals and close it up. So those are all safe in there. All right, so we're going to move the tam damage layer, the A underscore damage layer on top. And this is what we're going to want to do. On the layer itself, you have to select the layer that you're interested in, this layer, and then go up here to mode and change it from normal down to difference. And what this does is it actually creates a differential between the two files. So only the things that are different will show up in this. Everything else shows up as black. All the similar content shows up as black. It's very cool. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll create a new layer from visible. 
and then we can actually unhide or hide these so we can't see them and you'll see that new layer from visible has all the content that we just created which is great okay so let's uh hide that for a second we'll turn this panther layer back on and i'm going to check normal again so that will be back to normal and then if we turn these back on they won't do that funkiness anymore but we're going to work with this visible layer so from this visible layer we're going to create what's called a mask and a mask allows you to take anything that's white apply it to a picture and all the white areas will stay and all the black areas will become transparent And because we've created all of this content here around um, uh, around um, the damaged areas. These, these damaged areas will become white, uh, which is kind of cool. So, uh, I'm going to pause for one second and then come right back. Alright, here we go. So, the first thing that I'm going to do now that we have this file in here, there's a couple of ways to handle this, but we're going to go ahead and create the mask. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is go in here to colors and desaturate. Uh, desaturate will take all the colors out and just turn it into black and white or grayscales. And that's important for a couple of reasons. You can have rondelles or skin showing from the wrong color airplane. Now that you've changed the color of your airplane, you don't want that necessarily showing. So that's the first part. The second part you're going to do is go into con uh, colors and we're going to increase the contrast. We really want to make our lights super light and our darks super dark. Unfortunately, the contrast will really blade everything out, so we want to bring our brightness level up to. There you go. Now you can really start to see the differences between the plane and one of the, th or between the, uh, the two layers. One of the things I really want to get here is they have these dirt streams or smoke streams that come out of the bullet holes. Those are really cool effects, so we want to make sure that we can capture those. So ultimately what we want to try and do is make our whites as white as possible and our blacks as black as possible. And that means cranking up both the contrast and the brightness until we can get them. And I'm a little bit worried about losing some of those whites. Okay, so that's pretty good, but I think we can do a little bit better. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say okay on that. And then this is a, a, a trick that I do. Um, which is I'm going to go in and select a layer by color and I'm going to select the entire black layer. And uh, and then I'm going to do a select invert and that'll basically select the entire white layer but because there's so many different variations of gray in there I, I don't want to try and select all those variations of gray. If I go for the black I know that that's pretty much going to get everything except for the gray areas. And that's why I go for the black and then I invert it. So now we've got all of that selected. We're going to go over here and make sure that we have the color white uh, uh, in there. And then we're going to do an edit fill with foreground color. Uh, and that'll fill up absolutely everything that was white with, uh, with pure white. So I'm going to turn off the selection and now you can see all those drips, they're solid white. We're definitely going to get all of that content through. Okay. So this is going to be some pretty good damage. Alright, I'm going to turn that off for now. Uh, that's our damage mask. And then we want to go down to our damaged panther file. Now what's going to happen here is when we put that mask on, everything that's showing damaged here should be pulled out and everything that's not showing damaged should not be pulled out. So here's how we do that. You go to the panther file, you right click on it, and you say add a layer mask you say white for full opacity that's going to tell you that the white stuff is going to stick around and you get this new little box here and you can go back and forth you can select that or you can select this box and what we want to do is we're going to select this box and paste the content from this visible file into it so let's go ahead and turn this file on we're going to do select all which is probably redundant we're going to go to edit then copy and then we're going to come back down here highlight this make sure that this layer mask is highlighted and we're going to do edit paste and then once we've pasted that even though it didn't show up in here we had to have that in focus uh, then we'll go ahead and do anchor layer and that'll bring that down so when I remove this visible layer up here we can see the mask has taken effect and look at all that beautiful damage that we've gotten coming through 
So you can actually see all the grays and the bullet holes and the red uh, edges and the little bits and pieces, uh, paint chips and everything. So this is great. This is a great little damage file. Uh, if you do get any colors coming from the skin, if you got a little bit um, extra, you, got, you can either erase it or you can just change the color back to gray and it'll look like a little bit more metal. So you're going to have to figure that out. All right. So we don't need this visible layer anymore. That's our mask. We'll go ahead and save it because I like to save my originals. And um, we're actually not going to need this Panther non-damaged layer anymore. So we can save that. We can put that off in our originals. That's great. Um, and then we're going to take this file, which has all of our damage in it, and we're going to right click on it and do new from the visible layer. So we can turn this off now. And this is our perfect damage layer. And again, we'll be able to reuse that over and over again for any panther skin that we want to in the future. And we can even make it a little bit better or worse or whatever we want to do there. Okay, so we've got our damage layer up there. And we're going to take this panther skin that we created, the special one, and we'll make that visible. Now you see that up there. And the very first thing that we want to do is, oops, I made a mistake. I didn't duplicate my layer, right? So let's go duplicate our layer and put our extra down here. All right, and then I'm going to do another version of this panther damage file. I want to uh, actually, I don't need to get it. I just need to see it. So let's do this. Let's make this visible. I got to make that invisible. All right, we're just going to go in here and quickly select by color in this transparent area, anywhere with this checkered pattern. See all that lit up? That's great. And then we're going to go ahead and make all that invisible. You see it's still selected. And we'll go back up to the panther skin, make sure it's highlighted and I'm going to press delete. Now we've got all that transparency in there. I'm going to unselect and you'll see all those transparencies in there. But now how do I apply that damage layer? If I just make it visible, look what happens. Oh, all that beautiful damage just came through. We've got smoke and trash and garbage and jagged edges and everything else. And if you want to clean that up or make it, you know, more or less interesting, you can do that. You know, if you feel like the smoke got a little bit too carried away, you can always go back and use uh, a little bit more of a transparent layer instead of doing that really um, heavy duty white layer. But that's actually pretty good. We've got some pretty serious damage on this plane that's all visible with bullet holes and smokes and er smoke and everything else. So now that we have that, I'm going to come up here and uh, do a new layer from visible. We can turn everything else off. We can even put these away in our original files. Um, anytime I bring in another original layer like this one, I can just uh, apply that same damage layer to it and we'll come up with this result. So let's go ahead and save that out and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Okay, and we're back. Uh, so. I went ahead and replaced the damage layer with the primary layer to show you uh, what it would look like. You can see you're getting a lot more detail uh, than you would if it was just the transparency. So I just want to remind you that because this is a non-injured plane in the hangar, this plane doesn't actually show the transparencies. So normally you would have hunks of the hull missing and chunks of the uh, of the wing missing and some of these bullet holes would go all the way through and you're not going to see that just by putting the layer on like this but you can definitely see all the damage the much much greater level of damage that you're going to get by putting this layer on here um, you'll also notice that the damage has a little bit of shine to it that's because we didn't create a damage spectral map file or anything like that um, and you can do it but um, the the last thing I'll note is some of the smoke you'll see just how opaque this smoke is and that's because we did that select all black and then invert and then change it all to white so it was very very solid if you want to try and uh, maintain some of that transparency of the original smoke um, you can skip that layer and just try your best to get those uh, smoke lines as white as possible and it'll go ahead and transfer them with um, a little bit of transparency left in them 
and there's a couple other ways to handle it. But anyway, so this is your damaged skin file. I hope you guys liked this video, and I hope it was helpful. Uh, I have another video uh, on how to apply custom skins. It's a little long, but it talks about what all these files are and how they work, and really will help you as a precursor to this if you don't fully understand what all the things are I'm talking about and how to get these files in here. And uh, yeah, as always, please check out my skins. I've got a bunch of custom skins uh, that I really enjoy making for the game, and um, uh, some of them are uh, quite popular, so that's great. And uh, yeah, if this was helpful, please give me a like. Um, the, the likes help a lot, and uh, let me know that I'm on the right track. And if I'm not on the right track, if it was too long or not useful or too grainy or... Um, too quick. Whatever the case may be, go ahead and leave me some comments so I know how to improve in the future. Really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a good one. Have fun flying.